Hooke's law describes the behavior of springs under compression or stretching. The law can be described mathematically by the formula f equals negative k times x. k is a spring constant, which is a property of the spring itself. x is the displacement of the free end of the spring from its equilibrium position. What Robert Hooke said was that a spring would stretch by an amount that's proportional to the force applied to it. This can be seen in these simple pictures. Uh, on the left, we have several masses being attached to a spring. And we can see the stretching of the spring due to that applied force. On the right, we see a graph of the force versus the displacement of the free end of the spring. On the left, we have compression. On the right, elongation. Let's take a look at the graph below and see if we can find the spring constant k and give appropriate units for k. So what we're going to want to do here is rearrange Hooke's law. What we'll find is that the spring constant is going to be the slope of the force versus displacement graph. So all I have to do is pick two points on the graph with which to calculate a slope. When the spring hasn't been stretched at all, it's in its equilibrium position, which is the natural position that it likes to be in. That occurs at 0, 0 here. However, if the spring is stretched by one meter, the graph shows that it requires eight newtons of force to achieve that amount of stretching. So the spring constant is going to be eight newtons per meter. <coughs> so the spring constant will be eight newtons per meter. And those are the units of the spring constant. So what force should theoretically be required to displace this spring's free end by 2.4 meters? For that, we can use Hooke's law. And I don't have to uh, consider the vector nature of it. I'll just do the magnitudes for now. Plug in the spring constant and plug in the desired stretching amount. The force that's going to be required is 19.2 newtons. Now for all real springs there will come a point where the proportional nature of the graph, the linear nature of it, breaks down. For example, the spring is only so long, and you can't stretch it beyond a certain point. And we see that stretching it toward its limit requires a rapidly increasing amount of force. Also, there'll be a point to which you can't compress the spring any farther. And that leads to a lack of linearity in that region. But for every spring, there will be a practical region for which Hooke's Law fits very well. <laughs>